in the last video I did the asset side of the statement of financial position, but I'm now moving on to the liabilities and equity side. The heading I need, liabilities. And then of course we know liabilities are only into two categories, current liabilities and non-current liabilities. I start with current liabilities. Current liabilities are always in order of when they will be paid. However, we really don't know when they will be paid. So current liabilities must always start with accounts payable. 93,333. Then you can do them in pretty well any order that you want, although I tend to put all the payables first and then the current portion of long-term debt. We'll talk about that in a second. The next account I have is salaries payable. And this is all from the listing which we categorized at the beginning of the question. 5,703. Now, what is the current portion of long-term debt and how is it calculated? Let's go back to the information we were given, the additional information. In the additional information, we obtained the current portion of the long-term debt. That was $13,958, but what does this mean? Well, let's just give an example. Let's say that a company has non-current liabilities, so they have a bank loan payable. The bank loan payable is $100,000. However, a portion of that bank loan is going to be paid in the next 12 months. That means that the portion of the bank loan that will be paid within the next 12 months is actually a current liability because it is due and will be settled within the upcoming 12 months. So the bank loan payable has to be divided between two things. The current portion, which is the amount that will be paid within the upcoming 12 months. Let's assume they pay $1,000 a month, so the current portion will be $12,000. We then have the non-current portion. The non-current portion will be paid beyond the one-year mark. The non-current portion is made up of the $100,000 minus the current portion of $12,000, which is equal to $88,000. So when I create the financial statements, the current portion of long-term debt, $12,000, will go under current liabilities. And the long-term portion of the debt will go under non-current liabilities. Notice that the loan payable amount of $100,000 never actually shows up. I don't need to use it because I've split it between the two groupings. So what is the actual amount of the bank loan? The bank loan payable, which is due in 2024, is 139581 That's the total, but you know we're going to have to split that between the current portion and the non-current portion. 139581 subtract the 13958 will give us the long-term portion which is 125623 That is the amount of the non-current portion of the bank loan. The current portion, 13958 is going to have to go under current liabilities. Let's do it. Current portion of long-term debt is $13,958. That was the last of the current liabilities. We now have a subtotal called Total Current Liabilities which is equal to 112,994. Our next heading, non-current liabilities. We only have one, the bank loan payable, due in 2024. The total of this bank loan is 125,623, which of course would be the 139,581 of the original bank loan less the 13,958, which is the current portion. Now, because there is only one non-current liability, I don't have to do a total non-current liabilities because there's only one. I can move directly into total liabilities. And the total liabilities would be 238,617. We now move on to equity, also called shareholders' equity. Note that the equity figures come directly from the Statement of Changes in Equity. Let's just go back there for a moment. The Statement of Changes in Equity gives us all the balances we need for common shares, retained earnings, and the total equity. So it's the 64937 
285,761, 350,698 that we have to take to the Statement of Financial Position Equity section. And we start with the first column, which is Common Shares. 64,937. Then Retained Earnings. 285,761. And that will give us our total equity. 350,698. If we add together the total liabilities plus the total equity, we should end up with the same total as total assets. 589,315. And if we compare that to total assets, we discover that they match perfectly. So our statement of financial position has actually balanced. How would the financial statements differ if the company was following ASPE, Accounting Standards for Private Enterprises? Well, that's the topic of the next video.